Alle Teilnehmer befinden sich im Zuhörermodus. So, should we start, Gerd? Yes, I think we can start, yes. Uh, but here's some, some terrible noise in the background. If you please could close the doors or whatever. Someone is typing very loud. It's, it's a little yes. bit nervous. Nervous. Okay, should I start or you want to start, Gerd? Yeah, please, please. Okay, so uh, Hel yeah. Helen, welcome to our webinar today. Um, yes, uh, let me um, let me try to explain with, which is my position, and um, Gerd is then um, the next uh, after me. So I'm Lily Herz, and I'm responsible for the sales of our rendition server. And today is on my side my colleague Gerd Michaels, and he's responsible for the product management. So I give the word now to you. Okay, thank you, Lily, for this introduction. Hello, as um, Lily already said, I'm Gerd Michaels, product manager for um, Lufoxit Europe's server-side products. This is uh, for today, especially the rendition server and um, also the PDF compressor in the, the other part and also mobile scanning technology. But today we are going to talk about the rendition server and all its um, types of application where a rendition server is currently being considered or being put into operation. So we're, the other webinars previously focused on rendition server technology and uh, the idea behind enterprise rendition and what uh, functions an rendition server also has. Today, we see it more from the practical side. We just want to um, show where rendition server is being put into operation and what it what might give you some ideas or um, um, inspiration to find um, use cases um, for yourself. So, um, the first slide. I'm just going to uh, start a little bit with uh, technology for those who's the, who has the first time uh, hearing about rendition server. So, very short, what is a rendition server? It's an on-premise scalable web service for central company-wide PDF conversion. 
on-premise because uh, we want to make clear that a rendition server is installed in your um, local uh, IT hardware or at least the hardware that you have complete control over. Most people think web service, okay, the documents are going to the internet, into the cloud, and um, I, I don't know who's having my um, private data, who's working on it, what's happened on the way. So uh, just to make clear, it's an on-premise web service, so you host it either in your private cloud or in your, in your own data center. Scalable is important because we uh, orient this product to the enterprise market where it's um, important that you can uh, start at specific size and always um, increase your size or your load. Um, the more and more projects are coming onto the rendition server, the more capacity you need. So you, you don't want to buy just um, another system. Mostly you just want to grow or you want to increase capacity on your existing system. That's exactly what the rendition server supports. If you need more capacity, you just add capacity to your current installation. Don't have to put up a, another product or even uh, separate installations. Central and company-wide, this looks like a bit like a contradiction, but uh, we mean with central, it's one central service. It's uh, been installed on your uh, central data center, and it's been used for uh, it's been used company-wide. So uh, be it all from desktop software or from mobile devices like like a smartphone or uh, server-based applications, for example, your ERP system or your ECM system can also use this uh, central PDF conversion service. So that's in a, in a nutshell what is a rendition server. Most things are, uh, are covered here. So the next is about uh, the architecture. Uh, that's the, the last slide on the technology, sort of <laughs> mostly the first and the last. So what's a rendition server look like? It's the big blue box in the middle, and a rendition server is normally is not one server, but are several servers. Servers come in two uh, flavors. We have managing nodes and worker nodes. The managing nodes are those endpoints of the rendition server um, array that have contact with the outside world. They also host the conversion web service, and as this, as such, they uh, accept uh, conversion requests from um, external software, uh, prepare these requests internally, distribute these um, requests to the other worker nodes, collect the results from the worker nodes, and return the PDF to uh, the client part of the web service. So they are, like is the name, managing, they manage the whole rendition server infrastructure. You see there's also one in, uh, in dash line, that means well, the basic installation has only one managing node, but in enterprise, uh, enterprise IT configurations, uh, always take care that one can break down or become whatever uh, inoperable. So for failover, load balancing issues, any, all cases where you need more than one uh, device capable of performing the service, Rendition server also supports two or more managing nodes, which can be fed by an external load balancer. Just to make sure that you have your 24-7 high availability and um, also for ease of maintenance, for example, you can uh, update servers uh, one after the other, then take them offline, update them, and then put them online again, and all the same at the same time, continue providing conversion services to your applications in, in your company. The worker nodes, as you can see, they're only tied to the, the outside world through the managing nodes, so they just work and they have no concept of what's happening all around them. It makes it very um, easy from a technological and architectural point of view to scale. If you need more capacity, we just add more worker nodes to the rendition server array. So this is, uh, from design, makes it very easy to add additional capacity and keep the technological overhead very low. From the outside web service, we see that we have like um, two arrows here. One is pointing upwards to the desktop applications. Typically, these are synchronous interactions where, for example, a case user has a document, needs to uh, have this converted to PDF, so he clicks on a button or it starts a process, and he expects the result to return yeah, in, in the next seconds or at least immediately. From this point of view, we know that these users have a high uh, priority requirements. They can't expect users to wait for, for example, minutes if the system is under load. So um, they want to have like direct, um, direct re response. The other arrow is the same uh, conversion web service technology, but used from another um, another angle in another uh, use case. We see here like an ERP system, ECM systems, application servers. Those systems that have um, 
a lot of um, documents, but maybe or mostly not very high timing uh, requirements. So this can uh, run in a background capacity and direct or user-driven high priority requests run with, with high priority. Technologically, they use exactly the same web service, but they um, are used like two different types of um, applications. If we go down from these servers, we end up with the common file share, and this uh, highlights another interesting part of the web service approach we have here. Typically, a web service conveys the files to be converted uh, online. So if you uh, want to convert a file, the file is uploaded through the web service to the web server or to the server, conversion is performed, and the, re the result is returned uh, through exactly the same service web service line. There are um, cases, however, where it's much more efficient and less overhead and uh, for all uh, very much more faster if these files do not have to be transferred through the web service but can be passed on as a reference. In typical cases, these files are files to be converted are located on, on the local file share somewhere in, in the in Zen and then the rendition server is only passed a reference to this file, file name or URL and the worker nodes know exactly which file to work on and they can return the result uh, next to it or it, maybe, maybe even in, an, in a different folder. So that's pass by value or pass by reference if, if programmers would call it. Makes it very uh, yeah, practical for, for all kinds of uh, either direct integration or uh, indirect integration. On the right hand side, topmost, we see operation and maintenance web service. This is a REST-based web service, and the interesting part is that our own operation and maintenance web app uses this web service internally for all uh, management functions of the rendition server. The nice part of this uh, web service is that it's a public and published documented interface of the rendition server, which means that any other application is perfectly capable uh, to interact directly with the rendition server uh, managing nodes. So any function that you can do with a rendition server, operation and maintenance web app can also be done with any other software, as long as you know how to communicate with this. We thought it was um, important to do this just to make sure that we have a management interface, which is uh, not a second class citizen, but yeah, first level and also having exactly the same functions we use with our own management app. And last but not least, we have this uh, RDBMS database symbol on the right lower right corner. This is a relational database system that the rendition server uses to store its internal configuration information, the conversion protocols and some other uh, important information also regarding uh, licensing. Currently this database is only, uh, the only supported database system is Microsoft SQL Server because um, that's where we started with. The whole rendition server by the way is uh, running on only on Windows so it's a, take this into consideration. It's only a completely Windows-based technology. But uh, okay, the SQL Server is uh, a link to the rendition server uh, or abstract. Um, it's been wrapped by Microsoft Entity Framework, which means that uh, from the rendition server, it, it really does not know that it talks to SQL Server. It only knows it's interfacing with Entity Framework. So any other Entity Framework capable database could be put in place of the Microsoft SQL Server. That's technologically possible, but for now uh, we only support SQL Server because we also test it like this. But theoretically, if you have, for example, a hard requirement, we only have Oracle in the house, then something that we can talk about because Oracle is uh, also supported by the entity framework, so that offers additional possibilities. Uh, any questions to this uh, um, technological architectural schema? If you have any questions, so please feel free to type in into the box and we'll uh, try to answer as, as soon as possible or yeah, directly right away or if not then we answer them at the end of this session. But please type in as, as if, feel as you like. Uh, do as you like or do as you feel. So okay, I continue. Next slide. So then we enter through the practical cases. So first case we are uh, going to talk about today is where um, we have a line of business web application and the requirement is that all these uh, files that a customer supplies to the application must be stored in PDF-A. So this can be original or scanned documents and we have the requirement to store these as PDF-A files. Interesting is that this was um, a, a complete uh, web application on the um, server and this whole thing was programmed in Java. So we are from the, on one of our first customers, 
was using um, Java and also yeah, using our web service from within Java. We knew that is possible, we tested this, but it's always nice to have a um, working example of customers say, okay, we're doing this in Java and it works exactly as you expect it to be. And um, yeah, we have no issues doing this. This is very nice, um, very nice interface. So that even for the trial, we have um, little or no really interaction. They, you know, we're doing fine, this works. Um, no problems, everything is nicely documented. And even the final integration, we hadn't do anything with it. So it already means the rendition server is very well documented. People are capable of setting it up themselves, supporting it themselves. They do not require any extensive or yeah, expensive training. It's, it's very uh, understandable. You just install it and you can start integrating it for capable IT guys. So it's uh, the first case we're talking today is shows how the rendition service is easy to integrate. Case two is um, also an interesting one. Um, this uh, presents the rendition server in a typical conversion as a service case. Uh, we really did not have this in mind in the beginning, but someone asked if we can do this and say, yeah, makes sense, try and um, we'll see what happens. So what is conversion as a service in this case? There is um, a, spe a special adapter sits between a service infrastructure and the rendition server. So from uh, the client side, you're not talking directly with the rendition server, but with an adapter. And so from user perspective, you don't really, you don't really see the rendition server at this point. It's, you're only talking with the adapter. So it's clearly uh, shielding the rendition server, all the implementation details from the, um, the service infrastructure. And um, yeah, we uh, supported this adapter and uh, developed this, maintained this, this is part of, of the deal. And this customer is very happy using rendition server in, in this context. It's very um, yeah, interesting because the, the rendition server skills or capacities are being advertised in this service infrastructure. So it's, it's really some, some high advanced, complicated enterprise architecture, but rendition server is also capable to work in, in this case. Oh yeah, the use case is uh, conversion of scanned documents, office files, and emails to PDF, PDFA. So the, the typical file formats or use cases where rendition server comes in, into play. There was nothing exotic here. It was yeah, bread and butter, but the, the situation was a little bit, um, little bit more uh, advanced. Case three is uh, special because it was um, it covers a case where. Uh, a user has a lot of uh, systems, measuring systems, producing uh, electronic documents, like protocols from, uh, from production, and uh, also reports on, on different workstations. Uh, this customer has um, um, operation in different countries with different local IDs, but all, all over the places they have uh, these working stations that produce these documents. So currently they only convert these uh, documents to PDF and store it and uh, some guy finally um, inquired a little bit and said, hey, PDF is not, uh, it's not enough for us. We need to do this like PDFA just to make sure that these documents in 30 or 40 years can still be, uh, are still readable because, hey, we have a liability here. So we must make sure that these documents are um, put into PDFA as soon as possible. So let's see who are the PDFA experts. So they, they came to, to us. So um, the main reason why they do this is because of, of compliance. Uh, apparently no one was really uh, pointing this out to them, so it came from them internally, but um, anyway, so better late than never. So the idea is also that they um, take this opportunity from, from central uh, conversion to PDF to put in some structure in their processes. So currently these um, users are converting them more or less by hand using, for example, Acrobat or, whatever, uh, or other tools. Uh, resulting in different qualities with different settings. Everyone uses his own uh, favorite tool for making this conversion. It's yeah, it's like a one zoo of PDF uh, file format. And with the rendition server, they can see the clear opportunity to put this all into one standardized uh, function approach, and so to put an end to this uh, sort of sort of anarchy. The advantage, of course, is that these um, end users can concentrate on doing them the more. Uh, creative work and don't have to do something like manual clicking and converting files, what you're doing now. And of course, they reduce the risk of errors and less errors is, um, is potentially uh, money saving. It was a little bit um, different when people need to change to change their, their working ways because they've been doing this for years and uh, it has, no one has, 
no one has ever said anything before. But um, as soon as they understand it's about yeah, compliance and it could can be very expensive if they cannot provide these documents in, in due form and due time. Um, so this is, this is taken up on, on speed and it's uh, interesting, but it's a, it's a little bit of a, a bigger project. But it's a very uh, nice idea of having central PDFA conversion infrastructure, which is also bringing more structured work into the, to the end users. Uh, please feel free to, to type in any questions if you have anything uh, to the cases. So I continue. Case four. Uh, in the context of MIFID 2, that's a European um, law that is um, that is targeted towards anything that's uh, trading in financial products. And for example, if, if someone is, is selling you uh, stocks, then you need to have like a um, a protocol of all the communication, what have you said, what have you promised, and, and all of this needs to be very very um, put into a protocol so that at, at least the seller of this stock can say, okay, uh, I did my uh, duly job, I um, told anything, I did not hide any uh, wrong information. So it's to bring more uh, security into these uh, financial transactions. So part of it is that they need to protocol anything, all emails, all talks they do on a telephone, must be recorded and put into a file so that um, either the customer or later on even for example on um, when the litigation is on that they still can use this information and say okay um, 10 years ago we did everything according to the law and to the book so everything is, is okay in this case that's the european regulation mifid 2 uh, which entered into force in 2018 so um, here in Europe, at least, we see a lot of people um, having this on, on their plate and searching for solutions on, on bringing more structure into this in their processes. In this case, the only question or the only quest we have is converting these uh, incoming emails to, to PDFA and extract and provide email metadata so this information can be used to put these converted emails into the correct customer file. So to have a, at least a higher level of, of automation that no one is archiving these files manually because there are several thousands of, of contacts per day that needs to be uh, updated and that's something that they plan to do automatically. In the frame of this, this project, um, Foxit is um, uh, contracted to deliver a dedicated email a mailbox importer agent. So they said, okay, um, you're already uh, having a rendition server there, so please also feed it with the emails from, from these mailboxes and uh, put all the converted email files in this folder so that we can import them automatically. This, we just discussed it, either they could do it themselves, but they said, okay, no, we have other things to do. If you feel, uh, if you can do this for us, please make a, please make a code and so we will do in this. Um, the nice of this, this um, project is that's um, relatively low risk because all the technology, be it email or uh, the rendition server here, um, mature and all the requirements, it's, it's, it's very easy. They, they have their requirements and we, it's very uh, straightforward to implement this like, like they expect. Uh, because of 2018 approaching, they have some sort of tight deadlines, but we also can, um, we have no problems in, in helping them, reaching them. So this is um, this case also highlights that uh, Foxit can also help you with um, dedicated in integration work, also contracting uh, little jobs all around in the rendition server, something that we also uh, are happy to take care of and provide you a quote for your um, dedicated, um, adapted to your current solution or your requirements. Case five is um, where uh, someone was searching for um, a replacement for his Adobe Distiller server and if I, yeah, I looked in the internet and found out that it's already discontinued in 2013. So they were already running technology for years without having um, fully support in it. In this case, they uh, needed to set up the, an, a new server because the other had, um, had issues, so they wanted to replace it. And they took this occasion to say, okay, let's finally stop using this distiller server and find something that's currently supported where we have at least um, someone to talk to if something is, is wrong or needs to be um, modified. So they, um, PDF, they also thought about Foxit and they asked us and um, yeah, sure, a rendition server can out of the box, just like it is, install it and run it. No additional components or modules needed. We can convert PostScript into PDF. And we can on this way, we can also take care of, for example, embedding fonts so that these PDFs are exactly um, what they would look like 
whether they would become from uh, Adobe Distiller Server. So in this particular case, even if somebody um, is still using this, this legacy technology, Rendition Server can perfectly help you and provide the same level of quality and um, convenience like Adobe Distiller. So and then moving on to case six, the, the last case I'm going to talk about today. Um, another Adobe product is currently approaching its um, end of life uh, in 2018, it's Adobe Lifecycle. And yeah, most people um, are aware of it. Lifecycle customers are aware of this and are currently saying, okay, what are we going to do next? What is what are we going to do afterwards? So they looking around for technology and um, of course also come to, uh, to Foxit for uh, whether we can help them with MPDF issues. Um, we find out that a lot of these companies still have um, a lot of um, XFA uh, forms. There's a special Adobe uh, form format, not to be mistaken with or mixed up with uh, Acro forms from, from Adobe. This uh, XFA is a separate um, format, XML based. Um, the main issue with XFA is that it's a lot less supported in industry. It's, um, there are a lot of other companies we can are perfectly fine with doing acro forms, but these XFA forms technology is, is more or less a 100% uh, Adobe technology. So, if if someone is going to look for an alternative for Adobe, they they need to get a way to um, to at least either uh, convert these XFA files or find a way to to have a replacement for for these files. Rendition Server is very capable. Uh, is is perfectly capable of converting these XFA files into the normal PDF or PDFA file. So if they say we have these files here and we want to continue using them, but not with XFA format, then a rendition server can, can be used to convert these to the standard PDF or PDFA file. And before someone thinks, hey, um, lifecycle is, is much more than just converting XFA. Yes, we know. Um, we're not placing the rendition server as, as a one-to-one -one replacement for lifecycle, uh, Adobe lifecycle. But at least we know that there are some points and some um, some parts of the, of the uh, lifecycle product that Rendition Server is capable of converting them. So if you're not really sure, um, just ask us, uh, explain us your current, uh, which parts of Adobe Lifecycle you use and what your um, alternative options are in this way. And we are always happy to see what Foxit can help you or provide maybe partial technology in, in your uh, transition if you're um, planning to move away from Adobe Lifecycle. So it's not a one-on-one -on -one replacement, but we have at least technology, different parts that can help you um, move away from, from lifecycle or, or implement an alternative architecture in this case. Okay. There's a one question. Will this webinar show us how to convert a PDF to multiple documents? Um, this was not planned to show the XFA in this part here, but I'm um, well happy to, to uh, see this in a in a separate session if, if it's okay with you. If you have maybe okay, example, this was case. If you have maybe example files for us, please feel free and send it to us over, and we can convert it to PDF. Yeah, that's a very uh, very good idea. Okay, this was case six, the last case. Now we're um, Moving on to the, the little demonstration here. For those who have never seen a uh, rendition server before, it might be uh, um, might be some, some might be interesting. Okay, rendition server is a web service. So from from an end user point of view, there's not really much to see here. Uh, web service is um, electronic; it's um, bits and bytes. But uh, at least we want to show something. So we have um, created this little application, rendition server demonstrator. This is by no means intended to be um, some desktop tool to be used by end users. It just makes it easier for us to perform uh, specific conversions and show this in a more or less uh, user understandable and user uh, friendly way to, um, to prospects and to customers. So I prepared in this case uh, three uh, scenarios. I want to show you the first is where I have uh, a set of JPEG files with all um, representing scanned uh, pages in this, in this file. So it's a 32 page document with, uh, yeah, separate in, in, in JPEG files. I am going to uh, combine all these files, concatenate these, and make one text searchable PDF file in uh, using the rendition server. So that's the first case. As long as it's um, running, I move on also to the, the second one. Um, this is about uh, email conversion. Um, 
emails typically have attachments and the question often comes now if you're converting email to, to PDF what are you going to do with attachments and there we have um, different possibilities for example um, the, the easiest one is that all these attachments are converted to PDF as well and that all the pages first the body and then all the attachments are concatenated in, in one line so we have all all pages in, in, in one row that's the, um, the easiest one this is also in line with PDF A1 requirements. Another uh, possibility is that these attachments are converted to PDF but are still inserted as attachments into the body PDF. So this means that you're more or less um, mirroring the structure you have with the email. Email is the body and attachments. In this case we would have uh, the body as a PDF file and the attachments as PDF files attached to the body PDF. Um, because uh, a picture always shows more than just talking about it, I'm going to uh, convert this test email with attachments. It's a simple email with um, a 10 page diff file, uh, a docx file and a PDF file. I'm going to convert this email to um, the format where the attachments are attached as PDF attachments. So it is also PDF to you here, but that's a minor detail. So I say convert this one. Okay, so there comes the result. We see here, uh, I'm going to make this more viewable, we have the, this is the, um, the body of the email, unfortunately I didn't provide any body text, but it's, uh, it's, the, um, it's the body of the email, and as, as we can see we have the attachments which are inserted as PDF attachments. So this more or less mimics the, the structure we have. Also these, these attached files are also um, are also in PDF format. So you can see here this one's uh, perfectly also PDF A format and is a perfect valid PDF file. So that's a, a typical way of handling email attachments with, with PDF. Okay, so standard email conversion is, is, uh, is also possible if it, has, if it doesn't have any attachments and it's very um, it's straightforward. You have like a, this was an email body as two pages so we have like a uh, PDF also in, in two pages. This exactly looks like it would have been printed or uh, converted or printed yet through uh, Microsoft Outlook. Okay, so um, I return back to the first one here is um, through with converting these, these files here. See everything is green. We have here um, our PDF file. We see that it's been uh, reduced on 550k uh, and originally coming all the sum of all the pages is like 21 and something um, megabytes so we reduce it to 2% of the original file sizes. This is perfectly possible because the, the JPEGs are of very high quality um, there's, uh, yeah, the quality is even higher as, as, as normally required but nevertheless um, this is a protocol from the United Nations meetings and we see that we still have uh, the color as it used to be in original document so it's and um, even if we zoom in we see that it's still pixels but in a, in a very smooth quality and the most important part of this because we performed OCR remember the, the source was JPEG file so we also included uh, performed OCR included a text layer if I go for example to the text view mode on this document I can also see the text that was on, on this page we go like a, on page 2 we'll see so this is um, showing again that we can use rendition server to add value to scanned documents or even yeah, legacy scanned documents to make them this this information this text layer is also um, consumable for uh, enterprise content management systems for example and can use this to feed our full text database so make these documents uh, findable in, in the context so the Third and also already the, the last example I'm going to show here today is um, about overlaying. It's in, th in this case um, we use an, the, the overlay function of rendition server in specific form to implement it as a type of, of stationary. So you can do other things like stamping and, and such as well, but this specific example focuses just on uh, using this to to add any stationary or, or forms, for example, graphical forms that and you want to uh, put a second layer of text upon it. The overlay being used here is, um, this of course is a PDF file, I'm just showing this here, it's 
yeah, the typical letterhead with all the technical things in the bottom, the account number and so on. But um, it's a PDF, nevertheless. And uh, the original file we're going to use here is um, a Word file. It's containing only the, the text. It's um, just, um, just a black and white text. There's nothing graphical on it. If I'm converting this um, document, say convert. Okay, then the first thing you might see, it increases the size with 700%. That's okay. Um, this file is made as a PDF A and um, compared to this very compact uh, 17 kilobyte uh, docx file, it's, it, it, it's, it's more, yeah, more or less clear that it should, should, um, should be bigger as well. So this doesn't surprise me, it's something that you need to keep in mind. If a, only a black and white uh, Word document is XML, it's already zip compressed, it will always be smaller than, than the PDF in, in this form here. That's, that's um, something to, to expect. But let's have a look how it looks like and we see um, we have the black and white text put on the fancy uh, orange Foxit stationery. And that's already the last example here. Any questions to the, the three examples I've shown here? We have no questions. Okay. Okay, good. So then please let me move back to the to the presentation. We have got uh, came to the demo, then I'm already drawing the conclusions. So with these use cases we I or at least I try to, to convey this um, impression or the the sentiment that rendition server is a flexible and a reliable conversion companion. We have several customers who are using this uh, in ways we had imagined and even also in ways we did not even imagine and they're happy that they're doing this and they see their problems being solved. So that's a for us it was very um, nice to, to see this. We also noticed that integration is, is very easy to do. We had perfectly zero uh, support uh, requirements from people trialing either the rendition server or putting it into test or just doing the, the final integration. This is very easy for, for them to, to integrate and because it's a web service, remember the first case we had, um, where we saw uh, how a Java system calls our web service is no system, no platform boundaries. This is really a truly way to bring PDF conversion into all your platforms and applications in your company. There's now no way to say uh, we can't do PDF because it's not supported with rendition server and its web service. You can bring PDF conversion anywhere. And for us, it's a clear sign that the rendition server has yeah, duly arrived in corporate IT. And that's, that's the message what we wanted uh, to convey today. Um, we hope that you've uh, found this um, interesting, that you might have taken some ideas of it or even have, still have some questions or saying, okay, this might apply to us or this is something that we can, can put into to play or out of curiosity maybe just for better understanding, please feel free to um, type in a question even today now or ask us by email. Um, these are the contact data. Um, okay, you can see Lily, Lily Hertz and myself, Kurt Michaels. Um, just um, send us a question or whatever. Um, we can also organize um, private demonstrations where you work, for example, on, on, on typical or user files where you say, this is, these are my files, I don't want to share them with anyone, but please, please, can you have a look at it? And then we are happy to run them to our rendition server so you can see for yourself whether the result is in line with your expectations. Yeah, also thank so, you for, for joining our webinar today. I hope you find all information you needed. Yes, if you have any project or what we can do with our rendition server, please feel free to contact us. So, yes, that's from my side. Thank, thank you very much and bye-bye. Uh, happy to talk to you another time in another webinar or even on phone, whatever. Thank you and bye-bye. <laughs>